Um, so in case you've been before and you're wondering why my hood looks a little bit different to me, um, uh, I can explain. Um, so sadly, Mike is away this week. He's in, how do you say it? Um, so they're, either, <laughs> they're having their practice like all day. Um, they've been there, um, they've got their events week uh, this week, so he's there supporting them, uh, which is awesome. But sadly means uh, we've been deprived of his presence. I do apologize. Um, so uh, for one week we pulled off a tactical substitution, um, so I'm going to be your host for the evening. Um, my name is Tom, nice to meet you all. Um, I have the privilege of being a student worker at Holy Trinity, which is literally just there. <laughs> um, I work there with Emily uh, and Ellie and Stu. Um, yeah, uh, do come and say hello if we have an hour ready, I'd love to chat. Um, so the way this evening should run is it's going to be an evening of two halves, which hopefully should seamlessly flow together. Um, so for the first half, we're going to be hearing from Rosie Woodbridge, uh, Team GB Frisbee Black, about her career, um, some of the struggles she's faced, and the difference Jesus has made in her life. Um, and in the second half, we're going to be hanging out around tables, uh, looking at a passage from the Bible, and what Jesus has to say about the difference he can make for all of us. Great. Um, so let's start with... Um, to you. Um, so, hi Rosie. Hello. Uh, nice to see you. Um, so, yeah, why don't you introduce yourself and tell us a bit about what you do and where you're from. Yes, so uh, I am Rosie. I come from London. Uh, so I came from there this afternoon earlier on. been touring Cambridge a bit this afternoon and uh, seeing some of the sites. Um, London are born and bred, so that's where I've been, uh, that's where I grew up. Um, went to university at Nottingham. Um, and then straight from there went to work for an organisation called Christians for Sport, who I still work part time with now. Um, and we love sport uh, and also uh, love for people to have the opportunity to hear about the Christian faith uh, and the sports people as well. Um, and now also work for a church in London um, and uh, I'm married to one of the guys over there. <laughs> 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 Okay, um, probably isn't a typical day, maybe similar to the student world every day, just looks very different. Um, but uh, it will probably involve having coffee with someone, uh, getting to know them, chatting to them, um, reading the Bible with them perhaps, giving them an opportunity to find out more about that. Hopefully as little time as possible at a desk in front of a computer, um, and then probably some kind of training in the morning or, or the evening as well. Um, so that seems to moves us on to uh, your sports career. Um, so with, you say you were a Team GB Frisbee player. Um, how did you get into the sport? And uh, yeah, tell us a bit more about that. So growing up, um, I played other sports, so uh, a little bit of hockey, but running, to be honest, was mostly uh, a soundtrack to my story. <laughs> um, but running was my main sport. And then I got to university, and someone invited me to an ultimate Frisbee taster session, and honestly, I thought it was a joke. And let's be honest, ultimate Christmas doesn't seem like the most highly regarded of sports. Um, somehow I ended up going there anyway, and then somehow I ended up sticking around uh, and um, <coughs> realised that people actually took it quite seriously and could play quite competitively. And so, uh, ten years on then, uh, I'm, I'm still playing. Yeah, sorry, I should have asked, what, what is Frisbee the uninitiated? Um, yeah, I yeah, won't assume that everyone here has, has played it or has seen it. Um, but I think of a, a pitch the size of a football pitch, but maybe a bit narrower. Um, and as team sport, you've got seven aside, um, and uh, it's kind of like a netball. But the thing that you're passing is a frisbee rather than a ball, uh, so you can't can't run with it. Um, but it's a bit like American football in that um, you've got to score in an end zone. So lots of running, lots of catching, lots of throwing, jumping, diving around that kind of thing. Sounds awesome. Um, so take us through, so you're obviously a Team GB Frisbee player, um, what are some of the like, highlights and like, frustrations of that, like how's that, how's that gone for you in the uh, international career? Yeah, so I, uh, probably my third year at uni, um, I trialled and uh, got into the GB under 23 squad. Um, so that was kind of my pathway in, uh, really, and uh, we went to the World Champs that year and actually came home with a gold medal. So that was probably one of the most successful things uh, I've done. Uh, then I really got stuck into a club, um, we did a few club kind of uh, European championships um, along the way, 
and then uh, 2015 it was, I think, the GB cycle for the senior squad came around, that only happens once every kind of four years. Um, so I thought, right, this is the time, what are my chances, let's see how that goes. Um, and so played the uh, European champs in uh, 2015 with GB and uh, the World Championships in 2016 uh, in the very exotic location of London uh, <laughs> last summer. Um, and so, well, yeah, so those were definite highlights. Um, I remember the morning I was uh, at train station just checking my emails and the email came in which told me that I made the, the squad uh, for GB for the World Champs, which was, which was absolutely class. Um, and just being at those tournaments was, was brilliant, like what an experience. Um, and so, yeah, there's great joys in it, there's great joys of just being on the pitch, getting to play, uh, playing with a team and going through that kind of journey with other people together. Um, but then in terms of challenges and frustrations as well, I definitely have had a fair few of uh, those along the way as well. Um, and so, well, I'll take you through the kind of GB one. So, European Championships. Uh, we were expected to go there and win the whole thing, or we definitely thought that we would, and come home with a gold medal. Um, actually, what happened was we got knocked out in the quarterfinals to a team who we should have easily beaten. and. Well, it was absolutely heartbreaking for the whole team. There were a lot of tears and the team kind of fell apart. But at least we still had worlds the next year to, to look forward to because that's what really counted. So another year of like hard training through a cold winter and early mornings and you know time, diet, sleep, social life, everything is affected um, all for that. So we got to worlds, high hopes, high expectations, hoping for top eight probably. Um, and then what happened was we were in the group stages and it all came down to our final game uh, for us to get through off a three-way tie. And basically we were playing Switzerland and we had to beat them by four points in order to get through. And for the whole game we were five points clear and it got to the point that all we had to do was score one more point. We'd win the game and we'd go through. But we then conceded like four points in a row to the point that we won 15-12. So only three points clear. And so again, we didn't even make it past the group stages, let alone uh, be able to get to the quarterfinals. Um, so in terms of the team performance, that was pretty tough. In terms of my own personal performance, um, I found it uh, very tough. Um, I found myself on the sidelines uh, a lot, on the bench, not being called onto the pitch. Um, and I think at times like that, that like really kind of, well, it really hurt. I was really gutted. I remember. Uh, finally getting called onto the pitch for one of the show games so it was in front of um, a crowd of people and like crying <laughs> while I was on the pitch, like sprinting down the pitch trying to like chase, uh, mark, my, mark my player with like tears streaming down my eyes just because I was like, oh man, I thought I was good, like why, why are they not wanting on the pitch? Uh, what, what's wrong with me? Um, and so at times like that you kind of go like, well, what was it even worth it? Like we didn't do well, I'm not playing well. Like, what was the point in, in all of that? Um, which I guess we'll come to it in a little bit. But, um, but great joys as well, great highlights. Uh, this year, um, there's no GB stuff happening at, at the moment, so it's all about my club. And uh, we've managed to qualify for the World Club Championships, which we've never done before. Um, so heading off to uh, Ohio, America, in, in July for that. Um, and so that is, like, that is amazing. That's super exciting. So if you're a sports player, you know, or if you see sport, there's highs and there's lows. <laughs> Great, sounds cool. Um, yeah, so obviously Crispy is one major part of your life, but uh, Jesus is <coughs> one major part, otherwise it wouldn't be. Um, so yeah, um, how did you become a Christian? Uh, yeah, so I um, was brought up uh, going to church, and so my parents are uh, Christians, so they did teach me about all that stuff from a young age, so I think I always had this kind of belief in God, or I was aware that he was there. Um, but it wasn't until I was aged about 12 um, when I went on this uh, kind of summer camp uh, and every evening there were talks going on about the Christian faith and I remember one night it really struck me and I really grasped it for myself um, who Jesus is and that actually he loved me so much um, that he was willing to die for me even though he didn't have to and actually that, wow, I must have seriously needed a saviour um, if he had to die for me, the king of the universe had to die for me kind of um, so at that point I think I really grasped it for myself and was like, hey, you know what, I want to go for this and I want to, I want to live for this, for this guy. Um, and then through the teenage years I kind of learned more about it and again 
uh, ups and downs of the journey. Um, I think for me at university was a really pivotal time uh, for it. It was a time when I probably had the most doubts about my faith in, in Jesus and, and struggles with it. So I guess I saw the university lifestyle, I saw the way that everyone else was living and I was like, quality, like, let me get in on some of that. Um, <coughs> but then actually found that all of that other stuff, so the, kind of, uh, the nightlife, the uh, stuff I was doing with my mates, um, actually didn't make me happy. Uh, actually just left me pretty broken and empty and um, just realised that actually only in a relationship with God and staying close to Him and, and doing things His way, um, that that's the best thing for me, the best thing for us, and that's the way of finding true satisfaction. Um, so that's pivotal in helping me realise that. I get this still ups and downs, um, but it's just amazing to have a relationship with God now. So cool. Um, what would you say about like, the impact of then your walk with Jesus has been, specifically in the area of like, school? Yeah. Um, yeah, how is it? You talked about your struggles uh, and your successes. Like, yeah, do you think it's had any impact on how that's, how that's gone? Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, they're, they're hugely integrated. Um, Faith and sport and faith and everything else, really. Um, and the way I tend to think about it is that um, my faith in Jesus makes sport both more important and less important at the same time. Um, so let me explain. Uh, more important because I see that sport actually isn't just like some hobby, which is a waste of time, but actually it's a gift from God. So he gave me a body, he gave me a uh, mind which could do it, gave me the opportunities to do it. Um, so sport actually is a gift from God, so it's got this great value, it's got this great dignity in and of itself. Which helps me see also that it's not about me and my own glory, my success, I can't like take all the credit for it, I didn't make my own body. Um, so actually my, my sport is all, I can play that for God, and I want to play it um, to thank him for it. So it makes sport more important. Um, but it also makes sport less important, <coughs> because it means that sport isn't the thing which defines me because the danger is with sport with anything which you're really passionate about or you place loads of value on if you work really hard at that thing the danger is that you look to that thing to find all of your value and all of your your worth um, and that's definitely what I had uh, been doing in in frisbee as well um, and so I think that's why I both the world champs when I was there like in tears on the sideline and um, was because I, that was damaging to me, like to me at the core, because I placed my value, my identity, who I am, in being good at that. And so when I didn't have that, um, yeah, it was, it was really damaging to me. But my Christian faith changes that, because I realised that sport isn't everything. It doesn't have to be the thing which defines me. Actually, what defines me is that I can be a child of God, and I can know that one whose opinion matters the most, to God who created the universe. The way he feels about me is that he loved me so much that he was willing to die for me when he didn't have to. And that matters more than my performance, that matters more than what uh, my teammates think of me, the opposition think of me, other people think of me. And so it, it was totally liberating uh, to step on the pitch at the start of a tournament, uh, no matter the like importance of that game, that point, that tournament, whatever, and be so free just to play with no pressure, no fear, because win or lose, fail or succeed, they have a blind or a shocker on the bench or on the pitch, the king of the universe still loves me so much that he died for me, and that matters more than, than anything else. So that's how I put it, sport's both more important and less important at the same time, and it makes sport so much more enjoyable and freeing. Yeah. Yeah. But you found that like that's uh, had a wider impact on See, that, that's how it's helped you in sport, but have you found it sort of... <laughs> 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 have you found it, like, impacting on, like, other spheres of life? Um, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, absolutely, and I'm uh, aware that for um, some of you, or many of you, sport won't be your thing, and so I think what I've said definitely impacts into other spheres of life, that, um, so whatever it is that what you might be passionate about, maybe it is your course here, maybe it is your degree, um, maybe it's music, maybe it's art, maybe it's drama, maybe it's a person or a relationship, whatever that thing is that, that you love. Um, being able to realise that that itself is a gift from God um, and that therefore it is an amazing thing. Um, and actually I'd really encourage 
you, uh, to look beyond the gift to the person who gave it to you. So actually the thing which you love doing, the reason that it's so lovely, the reason that it's so great, is because of the God who made it. So the things that you love, the things that you're passionate about, look beyond them and see the one who gave them to you. Um, and then, so on the other hand as well, it's knowing that those things don't have to define you, um, that you're more than your performance in your degree, you're more than uh, how other people see you, your popularity, you're more than how um, the, person, the person you're in a relationship with uh, sees you. Um, but actually you, you can have this identity as a, as a child of God and that is unchanging and more liberating, freeing and secure than any other identity that, that there is. Um, so Mike's always finished his <laughs> 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 So the, the sort of standard uh, two final questions um, uh, are, uh, firstly, what would you say to someone here tonight who is thinking, well, this is all great for you, um, but I'm still not convinced, like, like it seems like it seems that Jesus has made a great impact on your life, but this isn't for me, um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not interested. Um, what would you say to someone who's still sceptical? I guess I have spoken to quite personally and talked a lot about the impact that it has had on, on my life, but I think what I'd say um, is that you never find anything in the world which will give you the freedom that Jesus does. You never find anything in the world which will give you the security that Jesus does. You never find anything in the world which will give you the satisfaction uh, that Jesus does. And so the, quest the, the questions that you have in life, uh, whether they're about religion or not, I really believe that they can all be met in Jesus. So have a look. You've got absolutely nothing to lose. Right. Um, and what would you say to someone who, who is on the verge of being convinced but is still nervous about taking that final step of commitment about making that final decision? Um, so tell someone, like tell someone about it, tell someone you're, where you're at, tell them what's kind of uh, stopping you. Um, but I say to taste the day, it's 100% worth it. Um, go for it, don't let, don't let anything hold you back. Um, it's the best thing ever. Got nothing to lose and everything to gain. Um, so, so make a decision. Go for it. Don't don't delay. Great. Awesome. Um, thank you so much, Rosie. Um, it's been such a joy having you here with us. Um, <coughs> can, we, can we give her a round of applause? <laughs> Great. Um, so I think we've we've got about time for about sort of two five minute break. Um, so yeah, if you guys just want to uh, have some chocolate, grab some cake. Um, also, if you have any questions for Rosie, um, she will be around for the next about 10 minutes, so do come grab her and chat to her. Um, but then, yeah, I will be drawing us back together in about five minutes, and we will move on to round two uh, and chat around tables. Great.